Brown High School. Uh, this is my first year and it has been a wild, wild ride. Um, I'm sure many of you are feeling, you know, something similar. It was just a year ago, um, almost to the day where we learned that um, our district and our schools in the area were going to um, to have to close so that we could shelter in place and maintain the health and safety of our students um, and, and our staff and, and our communities. And, you know, it's almost, almost exactly a year and we're getting ready to open our doors. Um, we're actually excited to start bringing some of our students back um, beginning on April 1st and then um, even more right after we come back from our spring break. Um, this is one of those kind of bittersweet times for many of you as new parents um, bringing your students into the high school. If you, if, if your eighth grader is your, um, your eldest child, then you are just getting ready for what it's like to be the parent of a high school student. Um, if you, if this is not your first, uh, ride on, on the high school train, um, welcome back. Uh, we have a lot of information for you this evening. Um, and it is kind of an interesting, um, it's an interesting milestone for our, for our families and for our students because this is a big transition. High school is a big deal. Um, and then before you know it, four years have passed and you're looking at your child who maybe now is taller than you and getting ready to go to college. I know that's what's happening in my house. Um, we have a senior and he's getting ready to graduate and move on. These years go by fast. And one thing I do want to make sure we say is that uh, your, your job as a parent is not done as your student becomes a freshman. We want to see you. We want you to participate and volunteer and be a large part of your high schooler's life um, while still giving them some space to figure out who they're going to be uh, when they become the wonderful people they're going to be as they, as they turn 18 and older and go off to college. So we are looking forward to planning a little bit more for the fall, but that is not what tonight is about. So while we're planning for normalcy, we want to plan first for your students' classes and what they're going to be doing with us next year. As we have more information to share about what fall 2021 looks like, we will be happy to share that with you. Uh, but for tonight, let's talk with our two lead counselors um, and, and we'll make sure that you have all the information you need. Once again, my name is Valerie Arbizu. That's my picture right up there. Um, I'm the principal here. Also in the room this evening is Assistant Principal Nicole Ellens-Martin. She has also been a teacher at Aragon High School for a number of years, and we're very lucky to have her. Also on our admin team are Mr. Juan Flores. He's in his second year here at Aragon, uh, coming to us from the Los Angeles and Eastside San Jose area, where I started my teaching career as well. And then rounding out our team is Ms. Lisa Nagendran. She's been at Aragon High School for five years and has been working with the counselors and um, lately has been enjoying some time off with uh, her new baby. So we have lots of new members of the Aragon family and we're excited that you're joining us too. So I'm going to turn this presentation over to our two head counselors, uh, Ms. Leah Sanguinetti and Josephine Ho. I'll be monitoring the Q&A. So if you have any questions, please feel free to, um, to put your questions in there. I'll do my best to answer them as fast as I can. My typing fingers are ready. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Arbizu. Yes, um, my name is Josephine Ho, and I am one of the counselors at Aragon and joined with um, Ms. Sanguinetti there. And you can see both of us pictured uh, on the right-hand side there. There's, that's uh, how it looks like uh, when we're meeting with students this year. That's our Zoom uh, photos. Uh, we have two other counselors also in our counseling office. We have Ms., or excuse me, Dr. Cervantes, pictured next to me with the wavy hair. And then uh, right below her is Mr. Alicott. Uh, and he's also been at Aragon for quite some time. And if you do have uh, children who, um, or students who gone through Aragon, uh, they probably remember Mr. Alicott because he's been with us uh, for a few years. He's uh, 
a lot of students have had him as a counselor. And a unique support system that we have at Aragon is our advisors. Pictured in the upper right-hand corner, we have four fabulous advisors who are here to help support your student uh, through the four years. And we work together very closely as a team. Okay. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Yes, I'm Ms. Sangonetti. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Um, you might be thinking, you know, what is the role of my student school counselor when they start high school? Um, and so what I like to say is that, you know, um, your student's counselor is their one-stop shop to connecting them to anything that they need on campus. Um, we work with your students around academic support. We meet with them uh, really early in their freshman year to kind of create a four-year plan. Um, we talk to them about their goals, um, you know, what it is that they see, they see themselves doing throughout their four years. Um, we also review academic progress with progress reports and report cards to make sure that we are setting them up, setting them up with any type of supports or resources that they may need um, for academic support. We also help with personal and social support. Um, you know, students, they have bad days as well. They may get into fights with friends or maybe a family member. And so we are here on campus to, um, you know, if they need to come in and vent a little bit before uh, going to class so they could be refreshed and kind of ready to learn, we're here for that. Um, we help students get connected to our wellness team here on campus, or if they need outside resources as well, um, we will be uh, a link to that. All throughout high school, we're also working on career and post high school support. So, you know, helping them make a plan throughout high school, but also kind of, you know, what it is that they want to see themselves doing after high school. So we do a lot of co college and career exploration. Um, when the time comes to start filling out those applications for wherever they may be doing um, after high school, we will help with that process. In addition to us helping with that process of college and career, we actually have a center that's dedicated to that. We have Mrs. Tizak pictured there in the purple on the left. Uh, she is our college and career advisor. And pictured in the middle is Ms. Mawala, who is our scholarship and financial aid advisor. And then pictured on the right is Mrs. O'Brien, who is our technical, excuse me, career technical education, CTE coordinator. So um, the, these three individuals are open to any questions, even during this freshman year. Uh, I don't think that is too early to go and ask questions about college or career. And I would suggest going in a little earlier than um, starting your junior or senior year, because by that time, it might be, you know, feeling a little rushed along with the application process. So uh, I really highly recommend students who come in to Aragon to really uh, seek them out in addition to working with us. And um, pictured here behind me, this is exactly where they're located, right here. So this is the front, uh, this is the front entrance to the Aragon into the main office. And uh, Mrs. Tizak, Ms. Mawala, and Mrs. O'Brien, their desks are right there. So you can't miss them. So um, just to kind of give you an overview of what we've been doing with your students um, these last couple of weeks uh, and, and this next couple of months, what that programming and scheduling um, plan will look like for them. So um, Ms. Ho and I went out to all the middle schools and we uh, got a chance to see some of the students' faces on Zoom, <laughs> the ones that wanted to you know, show their faces. Um, but it was great to get into the eighth grade classrooms or Zoom rooms and present to them. So we did those last week. Um, tonight, it, you are participating in the new family info night. Um, and then in the coming weeks on the 18th and the 20th of March, you will be making appointments to meet with counselors and our counseling staff um, one-on-one -on -one to go over your course selections um, and lock in those uh, selections. And then we'll review, you'll, you will get um, an email to finalize your course listings once we've picked all of those. And then that is when the fun part on our end begins and where we build our master schedule for next year. And then student schedules are finalized um, and then they will receive those um, in August when they come for orientation. So just an overview, we did these first two tonight and we'll be doing everything else in these next couple months. 
So when will you select your classes? And so do you want to take this over? Sorry, I think you were going to do this slide. Oh, no problem at all. So yes, like you mentioned, we're going to, uh, the two dates, March 18th and March 20th, and our school purposely uh, scheduled them for one in the evening time and also one on a weekend in the morning, understanding that family schedules are very different, especially in, uh, during this time in COVID. So we wanna make sure that we make ourselves available to meet with every family that are coming into Aragon. And at this meeting, you will be able to meet one-on-one -on -one with a counseling staff member and to make sure that all of the selections, um, it's uh, some, to make sure all of the questions that you might have about your course selection are answered. So one thing to keep in mind is that for your, um, that form, or excuse me, an email will be sent out to you uh, with the link for the Google course, that is a Google course planning form. That link is going to be sent to the email that you used to, during your enrollment. So the email that you receive for tonight's information about, uh, about joining us tonight, that email will be the same email that we will be using to also send out information for to choose your classes. Uh, we suggest going through that Google course planning form very carefully, it's very detailed. We try to be as detailed as possible so we could answer, so all of your questions that you might have is already answered in the Google form. Um, and also just please keep in mind that if, if you're not able to come on March 18th between four to seven and your only availability is March 20th at 12 p.m., which is the last appointment time, that's okay because it's not a first come first serve basis. Uh, just because if you're not able to come at the earliest time does not ensure that your child will be able to get the classes that they selected. The class availability is really focus on class size and not on this first come first serve. So please uh, choose a date and time that is that best fits for your family and we will do everything we can to um, answer your questions. And here is a, just a snapshot on how it, that Google form will look like. And you will see that um, it will, if for those who need a Spanish interpretation, there is an area where you click on it and it will show, bring you to the Spanish form. And um, there's gonna be a ton of questions, or excuse me, a ton of details in the form. And here's another snapshot to show you how you will select your appointment time. So, just keep in mind um, that when you are selected classes, sometimes maybe afterwards you're just thinking about it and like, oh, I don't know, maybe I changed my mind. I might want to um, think of taking a different class, maybe wanting to change to a different elective. So you could reach out to us and then we can make those changes, but the schedule requests will be locked as of April 16th. We need to have them secured and done by that date in order to work on our master schedule. So again, students and families are urged to review the course requests and to just notify us if you do change your mind. So once you have decided on your courses, um, a letter will go home in April um, just to confirm your request, okay? Uh, also, again, just to reiterate that April 16th date, uh, that is our, uh, our, real, our hard deadline. So, um, but I will say as much as we're saying that we are allowing um, changes up to then, I truly believe that during, when you're going through the Google form, you're gonna be making some, um, you're gonna be reading through it. You'll be able to make some selections. And then on top of it, you're also meeting with a counseling staff member to answer your questions. So I, I really don't believe that there's gonna be a ton of changes um, uh, for you, but you know, we are giving you that option to change if you, you know, because we all change our mind, we understand. Um, but we do need to have it by April 16th. And uh, so again, your final course request will be um, given to you in August during your freshman orientation. And the reason again for our de deadline is because 
our tool is very student-centered. Master schedule is built around your course schedule that you select. And just one moment. There's a number of people in the audience that have their hands raised. If you can write your question in the Q&A section, I'll be happy to address your questions. Thank you. So some important things to consider uh, for your students starting high school. Um, something that, you know, we really, as your counselors, when your, the student, your students come into Aragon, we really want to work with them to help them become the experts in what they need to do in order to earn that diploma. Um, and so there are two parts to earning a diploma. There is a credit requirement um, that students need to meet. And there's also a subject area requirement that students need to meet. Um, that total number of credits is 220. I mean, in a couple slides, I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper into that, that number um, and how students can get to that number. Um, and, but I wanted to briefly go through the different subject areas um, and explain to you that we work on a credit system. Um, our school years are broken into two semesters. We have a fall semester and a spring semester. Um, your student will take you know, the allotted number of courses, uh, let's say six classes in the fall, six classes in the spring. Um, each class that they take, they can earn five credits equaling 10 at the end of the year. So we will go into these subject areas a little bit more in depth later on in the pre presentation, but just to briefly go through those, um, all students will be taking social science for three and a half years, that will equal 35 credits. They will be taking English all four years, so 40 credits worth of English. Math, they will be taking three years is required, but um, you'll notice that your counselors are always going to encourage your students to continue on in math. Uh, science, there's a two year science requirement. One year of that needs to be a biological science and one year needs to be a physical science. World language is one year, 10 credits worth. Uh, visual and performing arts, which is also known as a VAPA, is one year, 10 credits. Career technical education, also known as a CTE, that is 10 credits, one year. Two years of physical education, one semester of health. And then the other classes um, are your the electives that your student takes. Um, and anytime your student goes above and beyond any of the minimum requirements needed to graduate, that course will count for that subject area, but the electives will kind of fall into the elective category. Um, so your students will really reach that 40 credit elective um, requirement, definitely by the end of their senior year, okay? A term that your students will also hear often throughout high school is uh, the A through G requirements. And the A through G requirements are a list of subject requirements that all students in California must complete in order to be eligible for freshman admission, admissions to the California State University or the and or the University of California. Uh, college system. So these, this is the four year college system. Most of the private schools um, and out of state schools, you know, we they definitely follow the A through G's, but it's also important to check those particular colleges because they, uh, they work independently. So they're able to make their own requirements. Um, let's see here. Um, what do I want to say about this? The beauty about the UC requirements and our graduation requirements, oops, excuse me, um, is that they're aligned. Um, for the most part, all of our graduation requirements and the college requirements are aligned so that your students are not coming into high school working on two different requirements, sets of requirements. There is one difference that I'll point out now, um, and that is in the category uh, E subject area of world language. For graduation purposes, we only require one year, but for colleges, four-year colleges, they would like to see two years of a world language. And it must be two years of the same world language, okay? But just briefly to go through the A through Gs, um, just to kind of show you that we are aligned, um, you'll see here that for social science, we actually want more than the colleges. We want three and a half years, four-year colleges want two. Uh, your student will be taking four years of English, Mathematics, you'll see uh, the same as a three-year requirement, but in the parentheses there, they, re they recommend a, a fourth year. Lab science is a two-year requirement, but again, they recommend that third and fourth year. They wanna see that your student is staying consistent and challenging themselves. Um, there's that one difference where grad requirement is 10 uh, credits and the 
uh, world language college requirement is two years. But again, they recommend that third year as well. Visual and performing arts one year, and then a college prep elective. So um, it's just one year for college. And as you can see, health, PE, our CTE classes, um, those are not required by the four-year universities. And so that is just strictly graduation requirements. Okay. So the question that we asked your student um, when we met with them is, do, you know, do they think that all their grades in ninth grade matter for college? And I'm, I was pleased, uh, I would be pleased to tell you that they all said yes. So that is a good sign. <laughs> um, you know, uh, we want your students to come in feeling uh, successful, wanting to work hard um, and challenge themselves throughout the four years. And we will help them through that process. Um, what this is here, and I will point out that I have it in Spanish in our next slide. So if, um, once you get this slide deck, you could definitely check it out in Spanish. Um, but what this is, this is a snapshot of a six period day for four years. Um, and that's something that I really want to speak to families about as well. Um, you know, we have a, a full load here is six classes at Aragon. Students do have the option to take seven classes. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. But seventh, the seventh class is really geared for, um, you know, maybe certain programs that we have here on campus, like our AVID program or leadership or maybe your student um, is interested in journalism or yearbook, or maybe your student is needing a support class in a certain area. That is where we would utilize that seventh period. But what I really want to show um, you and, and what we showed your students as well is that if a student took six classes all four years, they would actually end with 240 credits. Um, and our requirement is 220. So they're already, you know, if they pass all of their classes in those four years, they would have a 20 credit cushion um, towards graduation. So, you know, when you're talking with your student about planning their schedule, it's really important to talk about balance. Um, it's really important to talk about extracurriculars and what they see themselves doing in high school. We don't want them to overload themselves um, and we don't want them to stretch themselves too thin. We want them to enjoy high school. Uh, we want them to be as successful as they can in their classes. Um, and so really just pointing out that with a six period day, um, they could get all of their requirements in and then some, um, you know, throughout their four years. This is in Spanish to check out. Okay. And then this is a sample ninth grade schedule. And we're going to get into uh, more in depth into the actual subject areas shortly. But a schedule of a ninth grade student, they will all be taking English. They'll all be taking a semester of ethnic studies and health. They'll all be taking a math class, a biology class, PE. And then that six period class could either be for them to start their world language or maybe their visual and performing arts. And like I mentioned prior, that seventh period is really optional. And it's for students that you know are, are wanting to take particular uh, programs that maybe they would not be able to fit in their schedule otherwise. So the English program at Aragon for the first two years for the freshman and sophomore year, we have two different English classes. Both of them are rigorous, challenging. Both of them are college prep and both of them not only prepares you for the next year of English class, but definitely prepares you for college level classes. So one is English 1 and English 1 AS. And when students ask us, I don't know, which one, which one should I choose? And what I will say is that I will then follow up with a question to them and ask them, do you like to read? Do you like to read outside of class? Because if that sounds like you and you have a favorite author and you also are just so excited to go to the bookstore and get that next novel um, that's coming out by your favorite author, then that sounds like the type of student that will be ready for English 1AS. Uh, most all of the reading is done outside of class. So when you're done outside of class, you come prepared to class to go into the in-depth discussion about um, the reading. English one does some of the reading in class, but uh, like I said before, it is just as challenging, it is rigorous, and it does prepare you uh, for the next level English class. I will say that English one AS 
Uh, it is designed to prepare you to go into the AP classes come your 11th and 12th grade year. However, it's not required. It's not a prerequisite. So if you have a student who's interested in AP English, but maybe has not uh, taken the English 1 or English 2 AS classes, that's okay. And if they want to challenge themselves into an AP class come their uh, junior or senior year, we welcome that. And we just do, and during that time, if they that's a class that they want to take and they haven't taken the AS class, then what we do suggest is talking to the teacher, getting more in, insights about the expectations of the AP class. And certainly the counselors are also open and available to counsel them and give advice. So the next, uh, set of classes that we have for students is that you have to take one semester of ethnic studies and that's either in the fall or spring followed by the health class also during the fall or spring. Keep in mind that the health class is a requirement for high school graduation. It is not a requirement for college, but you must complete it for graduation. Mathematics, we have a robust mathematics program at Aragon. And so if your student is currently in math eight at their school, then you will be selecting algebra one for their freshman year class. If they are currently in an eighth grade algebra one class at um, in their middle school right now, then they will be selecting geometry as their math class coming into Aragon. And then as you can see, then the following year, there is a lot more other options for a student to take uh, during their sophomore year, and then all the way up to multivariable. But as you can see through the, this uh, map is that there's, there's options, there's ways to try different math classes, um, but ultimately what we want is to make sure that you are aware that our math courses are all very challenging. Uh, all of, we have a wonderful math department who not only uh, help students to grow mathematically, but then also will give advice on what type of class that they need to go to for the next one. Um, and I know that a lot of times our families have a lot of questions about math. And I would like to, um, you could definitely use that time, um, your appointment time with the counselors um, to talk more about the math. Science, every freshman will be taking biology and it is, uh, will fulfill both the college and also high school graduation requirement. Physical education is required. You need to take two full years and you will start that off um, during your freshman and finish it off during your sophomore year. I um, Some of the questions that we received from your students at, um, included, if they take, if they're on like a, a sports team outside of, of uh, school, such as maybe club soccer or softball, does that count for PE? And unfortunately that does not uh, count for PE. In order to complete the PE graduation requirement, it must be taken on campus at Aragon. There is no exceptions. World languages, we have three world languages offered at Aragon. We have Chinese, Japanese, and Spanish. We also have a class for Spanish for native speakers. So if you are, um, if your student have, has previous experience in either Chinese or Spanish, or maybe even Japanese, which we do have sometimes, um, we will have a placement test. We have not determined the date and time yet. However, once we do, we will definitely let you know. Another course uh, that your student can choose if they choose not to take world language is VAPA, which stands for Visual and Performing Art. We have art, ceramics, drama, technical theater, and dance. Technical theater is basically working behind the scenes. They learn about the lighting, they do um, building the props for the musicals and the plays. It's very hands-on. And um, our dance program is also, it's 
um, it's a great, uh, it's an amazing program. Uh, we started it a few years ago and it's one of our most um, uh, popular programs on our campus. We have three levels beginning in intermediate and advanced. So uh, there will be auditions for the intermediate and advanced classes. And once we determine those dates, we will definitely let you know. Another core, um, category under music, we, or excuse me, under VAPA is music. We have a wonderful music program. We have two different band classes and an orchestra. All three require you to have the ability to read music. Concert band and string orchestra also ask for at least one year of playing experience. We have chorus and choir, and it is determined based on your voice. So one thing that I always tell the students is please don't determine whether or not you have a good voice or, or you're not good enough for choir. Everyone is good for choir. If you have the interest of singing, you never know. Your student might be you know, the next Beyonce and um, Mr. Ch uh, Chen, our music teacher can definitely bring that awesome voice out of your students. So if they have, if they're, if your student is, you know, tends to sing in the car or likes to sing in the shower, you know, give it a shot, try our music program. Uh, and then we do have one that's the chamber singers audition only It's an acapella group. And you may have heard them around the community because they do perform. Our support classes. So we do have an English support class for our students uh, and they would be, the student will be working with the counselor to determine whether or not that is the correct class for them. And we also have, I think the guided studies listed there. There we go. Yes, guided studies. Um, and guided studies is a uh, class that's specifically to help students academically and also provide social emotional support for students. Um, and within the class, they do help with um, study skills, organizational skills, time management, critical thinking, um, career development. So it's a great class. And again, if that's a class that it sounds like your student might benefit from, please check in with the counselor during your appointment time. And we have two very popular electives. We have our newspaper, which is the Aragon Outlook, and we also have the yearbook. Um, and our students are, this is considered a, an elective and they usually uh, meet after school. So now I want to uh, showcase another amazing program that we have at Aragon called AVID advanced via individual determination. And I want to show this video that um, with our teacher who is the, the part, or excuse me, the coordinator of the program is Ms. Tiffany Chiaro. Hi, eighth graders. My name is Ms. Chiaro and I'm one of the AVID coordinators at Aragon High School. I also currently teach the freshman AVID class and I will loop with them all the way up until their senior year. So what is AVID? AVID is a four-year program at Aragon High School that stands for Advancement via Individual Determination. It is a nationally recognized program and AVID's mission statement is to prepare all students for college readiness and success in a global society. So our mission is to teach you skills and strategies to be successful in high school, um, in college and beyond. Who is the AVID student? The AVID student is motivated to attend a four-year college. They may not know what school they wanna to go to. They not, may not know much about college, but they know that they want to go. They're hardworking and individually determined. Remember that's 50% of AVID, A-V-I-D, individual determination. That means they are willing to work hard, that they have that motivation uh, to succeed. They're also willing to learn and use note-taking systems that will help them better remember or retain information. AVID students may need assistance in navigating the college process. The college process can be very confusing, very unclear. So AVID will help you, will guide you along the path. Um, you know, we metaphorically take your hand and we walk you through it. Um, we learn all about how to sign up for financial aid, um, how to, apply for a scholarship, 
And together, senior year, we sit down and we fill out those college applications together. How does AVID work? Well, we strengthen organizational and note-taking skills. And we do that because students who are organized, students who take notes and review their notes tend to do better. And we want you to be the best candidate possible for a four-year school. Now, as a freshman, we provide you with all of those tools for success. Um, you get a three ring binder, a three inch three ring binder, where you will put all of your assignments and paperwork and worksheets from all seven of your classes, all in one central location. So you won't lose anything. We also encourage our students to do the focus notes. Uh, focus notes is a method that ensures that you are reviewing your notes over and over again, uh, because we want to take that information that you're learning in your content class and we want you to commit it to long-term memory so you can do well so you remember the information so you can apply it to your your life now you may be familiar with cornell notes um, and cornell notes is just one format of focus notes you can do two column notes three column notes venn diagrams interactive notebooks uh, mind maps as long as you're going through the five phases of the focus note taking process, then you will be fine. We also do tutorials in AVID, and these are small student led study groups. So you bring in to AVID a question you have from a content class, like maybe you didn't do so well on this one homework uh, question. Uh, you got it wrong, you don't know why. Well, you bring it into AVID and together with your peers, you will work through it. They will ask you questions, so you'll practice those inquiry skills. They'll ask you questions and help you come to your aha moment. We also want you to be better prepared for high school and college, which is why our AVID curriculum consists of college research, career research. Um, we teach you reading skills and strategies, note-taking skills and strategies, uh, test-taking skills and strategies. You also learn leadership skills. Uh, we build that through team building activities. We do a lot of team building because we want our students to feel comfortable with each other. And we build something called our, our little avid family. We also enjoy college field trips and guest speakers. Um, so our, we had a guest speaker earlier this year, um, Morgan Deppenthal, uh, owner and creator of the Exo Mask. Uh, she's an industrial designer and she taught us her method of designing something from its conception to its execution. We also attend a cultural field trip every spring, whether it's the SF MoMA or the Asian Art Museum, which is right here. We also explore careers um, through career research and college research as well. So not only do we conduct college research, but we also visit college campuses as well um, every year uh, to a different school. And our sophomores go on an overnight Southern California field trip to visit Southern California schools. All right. Thank you so much for listening to my little spiel. Uh, you can find the AVID application at this bit.ly link over here. And if you have any other questions, you can email me at tchiaro at smuhsd.org. Thank you so much. Hope to see you join the AVID family. Bye. Wonderful. So that was just a little glimpse into our AVID program. We did play that for your students when we presented to them. Um, what I wanted to just briefly go over um, before we get into student life and what your students can get involved with next year on campus um, are some important dates to remember. Um, so again, we have our ninth grade programming uh, days for you to make appointments with our counseling staff to lock in those course selections. That will be on Thursday, March 18th from four to seven. We also will have one on Saturday, March 20th from nine to 12 p.m. The new student orientation is in the fall. More info to come with that, um, but that is a fun-filled day for students. Um, our link, you know, we'll learn a little bit more about that um, coming up, but fun-filled day for your students to get to know campus, meet other students, and you know, just start making those connections. Um, but we do have a tentative first day of school, and that is August 11th. So mark your calendars. That's really exciting news. Um, we're really looking forward to having your students uh, join us on campus next year. 
So what we'd like to show you now is our leadership uh, director, Ms. Melissa Perino. She, uh, we did play this for your students um, so that they get familiar with all of the amazing student life that is happening on campus. Uh, we have a really good time when we are together on campus. We've missed the students terribly this year. Um, and so we, we're hoping that we come back and we jump right back into what, you know, what we have set up for students. Aragon Dons are open-minded, passionate individuals who each bring spirit and contribute in their own unique ways to the diverse community here at Aragon High School. As a school, we care, which means we connect with one another to build meaningful relationships, achieve by establishing goals and steps to succeed, respect through appreciating our diversity, environment, and resources, engage by being present and involved, and show spirit by celebrating the diverse, welcoming culture of Aragon, displaying school pride, and having fun. The transition from middle school to high school can definitely be a bit challenging, but not to worry. You've got a wonderful support system here already waiting for you and prepared to help you out. Whether you have questions about classes, different clubs on campus, sports, drama, or any general student activities, we are here for you. Specifically, Link Crew. Our high school transition program focuses on welcoming all students who are new to our Aragon community by identifying experienced students who help our newcomers navigate high school and learn who we are as a school community. We work on ensuring that the transition to our school is easy and that our new dons feel comfortable and connected throughout their time at Aragon. Student life at Aragon is full of exciting activities, events, and opportunities. From planning out school rallies and dances in the leadership class to actively engaging in extracurriculars, there's so much you can do to harness your curiosity. Spirit Days are brainstormed by our Spirit Commission in fifth period leadership and are fun ways to get the Aragon community to show school spirit. Enjoying football games and basketball games are a favorite of many dons as the positive energy is unmatchable. Here at Aragon, we have over 60 student-run clubs arranged in the categories of academic, cultural, science technology, service, and social. Clubs meet once a week to discuss specific topics and engage in activities. Our clubs highlight the inclusivity and diversity of our students, emphasizing that there is a place for everyone on campus. Joining a club is one of the best ways not only to meet new people, but also share your interests with your peers. Aragon Athletics are a huge part of our community. Over 50% of the student body participates in one or more sports. Aragon offers a variety of athletic programs each fall, winter, and spring, including cross country, football, dance team, sideline cheer, girls tennis, girls volleyball, and water polo in the fall. In the winter, you can try out for basketball, dance team, sideline cheer, competitive cheer, soccer, and wrestling. Badminton, baseball, golf, lacrosse, softball, swimming, boys tennis, track and field, and boys volleyball are offered in the spring. Aragon strives to foster the next generation of leaders. The leadership and student government programs here at Aragon allow students to become the agents of change within the community. Aragon has three leadership classes and multiple student government entities. The three leadership classes at Aragon are fifth period leadership, fourth period renaissance, and link crew. However, link crew is not available to freshmen. Additionally, each grade has a class council composed of four officers that oversee class events and other relations. If you're interested in joining Renaissance or Leadership, you must fill out the form provided previously. Information about class councils will be provided during the fall semester. Thanks for watching. We hope to see you next year and go Dons! Hi, my name is Melissa Perino and I'm the Director of Student Activities here at Aragon High School. My name is Ben Wen. I am uh, ASV Treasurer and Secretary. Hi, my name is Lucy Yan. I'm the ASB Vice President. Hi, my name is Angela Bunzapanya, and I am an exec member of the Renaissance class. And we're here today to talk to you a little bit about student life here at Aragon High School and what is it like to be an Aragon student. One of the things that you'll see um, when you first show up on campus is our Aragon Is board that is located outside the leadership room. And we had asked students to identify who we are as a community. 
Um, and since it's so small right there on your screen, um, we took the uh, words that came up the most. And so our student body believes us to be an inclusive and diverse campus that is accepting, we're a family, caring. And one of the words that came up the most was Ohana. The things that we are not as a community are bullies, exclusive, basic, boring, discriminatory, or judgmental. And so I like to start with this slide as a reminder that you're coming into a really welcoming and inclusive community who is gonna champion you and appreciate you for exactly who you are. One of the things that is really kind of scary about the transition from middle to middle school to high school is the is that transition and not knowing what to expect. Um, one, one of the ways that you can ease the transition to high school is by getting involved early on. Join a sport, join a club, participate, enroll in the leadership class. There are so many opportunities that are available to you. And so we want you to take those healthy risks and we want for you to take an effort to get to know your new community. There are lots of ways that at Aragon, we're gonna support your student. Um, we have our Link Crew program, which is composed of upperclassmen who really help shepherd in our new students and introduce them not just to the culture of Aragon High School, um, but, but really help them through, um, you know, getting to know our new community and feel welcome and feel like you have a place like Aragon is a home for you. We have awesome staffity. You'll see a little bit later some of the wonderful things that our staffity are willing to do um, to keep the student body happy. You have academic advisors. You have an academic counselor. You have, we have wellness counselors um, who have been really integral, especially during this, um, this time in distance learning. We have college career and financial aid services. And special to Aragon, we have a flex time, which is time built into the schedule for each of our students to get one-on-one -on -one help um, from their teachers. And so it's a time to get academic support um, that's built into the, into the schedule as opposed to um, having to go after school or during your lunch time. One of our greatest and newest programs um, that's a part of our leadership program is our Link Crew program. And our Link Crew runs our new student orientation that takes place in August. In um, the documents that you receive from your middle school, as well as um, you can find the QR code um, on the last slide of this presentation, uh, the QR code will link you to all of our updated information due to the constant changes because of the pandemic. Um, we will be keeping that um, the, the link to the QR code um, updated with the events. Uh, but we have our new student orientation. And this is the first time that our new Aragon students will be coming onto campus and they will be meeting their link crew leaders who really are gonna help them meet new students from other schools and get an understanding for our campus what our, uh, what our school community is about, our belief system. Um, they're gonna give high school tips, how to survive the first uh, semester and do well in all of your classes, how to get into your locker, what to do in this, in this situation. And they also continue that relationship throughout their years at Aragon. Um, it is not unusual for link through leaders to be maintaining contact every month, um, having uh, different activities for your students to participate in, because we believe at Aragon that students who are connected are happier, they perform better in school, and ultimately it makes it a safer campus for us all. Um, so we are really big on making sure that our students connect to one another, to the faculty, and to our community. Um, so Link Crew is an awesome uh, leadership program that we have and a way for you to meet new students when you come to Aragon. Um, here we have linked two different videos that you can see uh, that kind of showcase the welcome that your students will get when they come to Aragon, okay? And so we really take um, our job very seriously here in activities. We know that we have 180 days to make an impact and to make you believe what we always say here at Aragon, once a dawn, always a dawn. We want you connected, happy, feeling like you're valued and seen and appreciated on this campus. And so we're really excited to have you here. And we wanna make sure that in your first 180 days here on on uh, the Aragon's campus that you, um, that you are included, seen, and appreciated. Hey, thank you, Ms. Farina. Let's go over how you guys can get involved in student life. We'll be covering how you can participate in everyday life, clubs, sports, and theater. Lucy, Angela, and I will be covering these, and we look forward to introducing all of the programs we have at Aragon to you. 
Let's start off with Spirit Days and games. Most of you probably know what Spirit Days are. However, for those of you who don't, Spirit Days are when you dress up to a fun theme and you can have photo shoots with friends. At Aragon, we have competitions between the different grades to see which class can earn the most points. We also have games. These are some themes of the games we've had in the past, such as Red Sea, Blackout, Pink Out, our LGBTQ game, our home football and basketball games, and as on this slide, there are many pictures. You guys can see rallies, you guys can see games, you guys can see spirit days. They're all on here. And there might even be some teachers on here dressed up. So we love our teachers here at Aragon and they are willing to go so far for us. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Next, we'll cover rallies and school dances. So we have all school rallies where dance team, the cheer squads, teachers, sports teams, games, and amazing spirit will all be present. We have lunchtime rallies where there are games and contests and promotions for events. You guys can see four of our administration dressed up as candy, cotton candy in the picture in the top left corner. We also have whole school dances. We have homecoming, we have formal. These are available to freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors, and you guys can see some of the pictures from our dances. We also have prom, but the, that's for juniors and seniors. We have a video linked on this slide for you guys to check out our formal rally from 2020. This was just before distance learning started. So if you guys want to get a taste of what in-person school is like, feel free to click on that. Next slide, please. Thank you. We also have many clubs at Aragon. Clubs are such an important part in our community, and we believe that you guys should definitely get involved with clubs. We have a wide range, about 70 clubs, and if you don't find any clubs that fit your interests, you can always create your own club. Most clubs meet at lunch, however, there are exceptions to this, and they're an incredible way to explore your options. If there isn't a course for something you're especially interested in, you can create a club, you can participate in a club and still pursue those interests. Club fair is in August, and what club fair is, is if you guys can see the picture at the bottom, all of these clubs will have a small demo about what they do, and you guys can see which clubs you are interested in and sign up for them. We highly encourage participating in clubs and we would look forward to throwing club fair for you guys next year. If you guys want to check out the current clubs that exist at Aragon, you can click the blue link at the title of this slide and they'll take you to our club website that will have all of the different clubs, their meeting times and a short description for those of you who want to know more. Okay, over to you, awesome. Lucy. Thank you, Ben. So going into sports, sports is one of the biggest parts of our Aragon community. Over 50% of our students are athletes in one or more sports. Um, we even have some people participating in three sports. So you're limited to one sport per season just to make sure that each athlete is committed to their sport in terms of games and practices during that season. Um, and we're gonna kind of go over the different sports in each season. Um, and the level of competitiveness and playtime in each of those. Um, but do know that all students are welcome to try out for any sport that you'd like. Um, you can go ahead and try out for a sport that you've been playing in competitively for years, or you can just try a new one um, just to play leisurely and meet new people. Um, and we have three levels, freshman, JV, and varsity, varsity being the most experienced level. Um, and if you're interested in learning more about our rosters or our schedules or tryouts, um, or even buy merchandise, you can go ahead and go to the maxpreps.com website and search for our Aragon teams and there you can find all of those um, things. And lastly, if you're interested in playing a fall sport, make sure that you are preparing to get your physical as soon as possible because um, a lot of fall sports do practice in the summer. For example, I play volleyball and we have conditioning and open gyms over the summer so that we're able to train our athletes before our season starts, as well as meet all the new freshmen who are interested in playing that sport as well. Um, and in order to participate in those, you do need to be cleared by your doctor. So make sure to do that as soon as you can and prepare for that if you're interested in the fall sport. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, and so we're gonna go over all of the sports that we have in each season. So in the fall, we have cross country, girls golf, girls tennis, girls volleyball, water polo and football and fall sports typically run from August to November, depending on how long your season is. In the winter, we have basketball for, boy, 
for both boys and girls. We have wrestling, soccer, and competitive cheer, and that typically runs from November and December to um, February. Um, and then for spring, we have badminton, baseball, softball, boys golf, lacrosse, swimming, boys tennis, track and field, and boys volleyball. Um, and as you can see, the title of this presentation or the slide is linked with um, a document that shows the three tiers of sports that you can get involved in. Um, so the first one is one of the most easy sports to get into because their rosters are very large and so they're typically able to accommodate all of the students who want to try out for that. And so sports like that typically include track and field um, and cross country and such. Um, the next tier we have is called more difficult. Um, in which there still is a big amount of people trying out, but the roster is still um, typically big enough to fit those people, but there are sometimes are cuts. And so um, sports like that include girls tennis. And then lastly, our third tier is most difficult in which it's sometimes it's competitive to get your play time, as well as there are um, a lot of people who do try out and very limited spots on our roster. Um, and so if you're interested in looking at how competitive certain sports are to see which ones you would like to get involved in, um, make sure to check that document out to see all of the sports listed in those categories. Another huge part of our Aragon community is our performing arts. Um, so we have a huge fall musical um, during the first semester, and then we have a spring play in the second semester. So on the slide, you can see two flyers, one from our um, fall musical and one from our spring play in our 2020 year. Um, and I remember going to these plays and they were absolutely incredible just seeing how all of the teams could come together to put out such an amazing play. And there were so many families and I brought some friends from other schools to come watch this play. And it was so great just being able to appreciate the hard work that our drama program puts into this. Um, and not only that, um, we have larger performing arts groups outside of Aragon Drama, if you're not interested in that. Um, you can also get involved in making props and setting those up for the plays and um, musicals. If you're interested in that, you can join our tech theater class. Um, you're also, if you want to do improv, we have an improv team on our campus and we also have acapella groups and a lot of other singing and musical groups um, on our campus as well, if those suit your interests. All right, um, one of the other ways you can get involved is by taking a leadership class or running for class council. All right, um, so starting with leadership, um, there are two classes that you can apply um, for, and both classes are in charge of creating school-wide events. Um, and they build school culture and celebrate the Aragon community um, because you guys are continuing a lot of traditions um, and starting new fresh events that people look forward to. Um, this, con this connects the entire school, um, makes feel, it makes everyone feel like they're involved, um, and all student uh, events are planned by their peers, so it's made by students and it's for students and staff to see. Um, the application for applying to leadership is um, in the title, that's what it's linked to, it tells you um, what you need to do and what you need to bring. Alright, um, also there is class council, um, which you can run for. Um, if you get elected, then you are in charge of your class's fundraisers, um, which uh, you get money for, future class activities, um, which includes prom, because they cost money. Um, you, you also sell class spirit gear, um, which is used in rallies. Um, and you can also get class bonding, you also create class bonding activities, um, which help build your class's chemistry and make you guys feel closer connected. Um, if you are in class council, you're involved in a lot of changes in the school. Um, there are town halls that every student, there, where one student from each class in your grade um, attends to a meeting that you host, and you talk about a lot of opi uh, like opinions and concerns about new and upcoming changes, um, and they voice their opinions, and then they um, tell their class in live and up. And so elections for the class of 2025 will happen in the fall, um, but it's something for you to keep an eye on if you are interested in being a leader who serves your Aragon community. Okay, so we hope by now you're really excited about all the opportunities that Aragon has for you to get involved and get connected. We really believe in having fun as a community and, um, and I hope that you see that through this presentation and through the Google site that we created for all of our incoming ninth graders. Um, some other ways to start transitioning into high school and thinking about all the opportunities 
opportunities that we're gonna have when we're together, um, I put on this final slide. So the first thing that I would tell any student is start watching videos to see what kind of community you're coming into, right? Um, we've all been in distance learning for a year. Aragon, we really miss each other. So um, hopefully we're all back together in August because we, we do miss each other. Um, I've linked a few different experiences or moments um, from Aragon um, here on this slide for you. And they'll also be on that Google slide. Um, I'm sorry, that Google site. Um, so Halloween is a really big deal at Aragon and all of the different departments dress up and do a costume contest that the students judge. So um, our last Halloween rally is linked there so that you can see um, uh, how involved all the faculty are in trying to win this pumpkin trophy. Uh, every other year we have a lip dub that's an all school music video where everyone participates and we get to showcase what a fun community we have. So our most recent lip dub um, is linked there for you to see as well. And good news because uh, 2021 is our next lip dub year. So that when you're a freshman, we should be filming lip dub. So you'll get to participate and see how that goes. We do a lip dub every other year. Um, this year to help break up the monotony of distance learning and to show how much our staff and faculty love our students. We did um, a, a Staffalty Reads mean tweets. So the students wrote some mean tweets for the teachers and then we read them out loud um, and reacted to those. And it was really funny because when we were creating it, we were like, well, I don't know that the kids are gonna say such mean things to us. Cause like um, someone had said earlier in the presentation, uh, our staff and faculty and our students, we all get along really well. So the, the tweets weren't that mean, but you can see the, the links that our faculty are willing to go to, to make our community welcoming and fun and like a good place to be. Uh, and then one other video that we put together while we were in distance learning this year, uh, we asked the student body to submit to us their favorite moments from Aragon from when we were together. And so that last video under letter D uh, is made by our students uh, that we just put it together, but they're our favorite memories together as a community. And so uh, so you should check those out to give to get in of like what life is like. Normally you all would have come onto campus and shadowed with us and been here for our open house. And so you would have seen a lot of these things uh, before, but since we're in distance learning and we are keeping everyone safe, uh, hopefully the videos will suffice. The second thing that you can do to start getting ready for Aragon is to get your red and black ready. We wear red and black on Fridays. So we've linked our spirit shop if you wanna start shopping from some spirit gear so that you can be all set on day one. Um, that is linked there for number two. And then the third thing to help ease the transition and to kind of start thinking about that transition to Aragon is to be in the know of what events we're throwing for you before school even starts. So our orientation program starts the week before school uh, begins. Um, right now, because of the uncertainty with like what tier we're in and what's going on, uh, we're being general and saying August 2020, 2021. Um, but if you scan that QR code that's right there, it will link you to our website, our school website that has the updated information. So we'll be updating that all throughout uh, the rest of the spring semester and through the summer um, so that you know what's coming up because we want you to be a part of everything that we're planning for you and for our community when, we're, when we all come back together. Okay, so make sure you have that QR code handy and that you scan it um, throughout the summer so that you know what's coming up. We're so excited for you to be um, a part of our community. And like we said, Aragon, once a dawn, always a dawn. We'll see you soon. Welcome to Aragon. Thank you. Aragon dawns are open minded. So that pretty much covers everything that we wanted to share with you this evening. Um, I know that we have been answering many questions in the chat tonight. Um, again, we will be uh, meeting with you one-on-one -on -one to where we can answer more of your questions individually. I know, you know, there was a lot of questions in regards to math, and those are really, you know, kind of individual specific questions geared towards your students. So, um, you know, it's important. I know there's a lot of families wanting to accelerate in math over the summer, um, but we really need to keep into consideration you know, our students haven't been in the classroom um, this year. When a student takes a summer course um, in the summer, it's condensed. So it's a whole year's worth of a math course condensed into six to eight weeks. Um, so like Ms. Hill was saying earlier, we, we really have a, a robust um, math program here. And, you know, our math department would love to see your students start 
fresh here. Um, and then we have many opportunities for acceleration throughout your four years and your, you know, your students counselor will be happy to speak with you about all those options. Um, but really there's no rush. Um, you know, they have plenty of time to challenge themselves and take rigor. Um, and so hopefully they can enjoy a little bit of their summer as well um, because they've been behind the screen and in their bedroom uh, locked in with distance learning. And so we're hoping that summertime is really a time for them um, to refresh and uh, unplug and um, have a little bit of fun. Okay. Um, we are here a little bit longer if we want, if you want to type in any more questions. Um, let's see. Yes. Yes. There is. I know I was like. So Ms. Sanguinetti, I can't hear what Ms. Aleds Martin is saying, but I'm hoping you it can. It was on your, it was on the video. Um, let me, give me one second. Bear with me. Lots of clicks, I apologize. <laughs> Miss Ellen is in the Spanish interpretation room, and so that was why you could not hear her. Um, can you hear Miss Ellen Martin now? I am the only one that could got it. You have the special speakers. So, like Miss. Um, uh, Perino mentioned in her presentation, we have a Bitly presentation or Bitly website that we will be updating throughout um, the semester with all the important links, um, you know, that that you would need to access. Um, we when we update uh, information as, in regards to like world language placement tests and things like that, we will definitely um, be putting that information up. Sorry that I'm clicking on. Um, do we want to go through the questions a little bit more? Um, let's see what we have here. Do we work with CSM for ASL classes? Um, absolutely. Um, so, you know, if there is a world language that maybe you, your student is interested in taking, but we, you know, we don't offer here, um, they definitely can take world language classes that we don't offer um, here at Aragon at our local community college, yes. Um, we do have auditions for orchestra. Unfortunately, some uh, PE classes, um, they need to be taken here at Aragon. So we will not allow students to uh, fulfill PE requirements up at CSM. Um, and that's mostly just because they there's a, a certain high school curriculum, a PE curriculum that students need to take and pass um, that is not offered um, throughout any other program. VAPA is not considered a CTE credit. So those are two separate requirements. So VAPA is a visual and performing arts and a CTE is a career technical education class. Um, and so uh, in, in, in those websites that we are sharing with you throughout emails, you will also uh, have a link to our course planning uh, guide so that you could read a nice description of what each of our classes entail. ASL can be taken as a language, yes. Uh, let's see, what do extra credits go to? Um, GPA, I'll bring them. Yes, um, so I, I believe the question is in regards to extra credits. And so if your student takes an honors course or an AP course here at Aragon, uh, they will get an extra point to, to work into their GPA. Um, we're on a four point scale here. So if a student earns an A, that is a four. But if they're in an honors or an AP, they would work out that their GPA with a five. Um, a B is usually a three, it would be a four. A C is a two, it would be a three if you're getting the extra point boost. Um, Ds do not get the extra point. 
um, students can start taking their career technical education class. Um, you know, we <laughs> really throughout their, their four years, there's not a time frame of when they have to get that in. As long as they, uh, you know, if they haven't taken it their freshman, sophomore, junior year, as long as they're taking it in their senior year and pass, they'll fulfill graduation requirements. Question in regards to the lack of geometry in middle schools. You know, we are two different uh, districts, and so they they create their math uh, sequences differently than we do. Um, what I can say to that is that you know, obviously, we have our acceleration, our compressed math classes um, that your student can possibly enter um, in their ninth grade year, um, and we have many opportunities for students to accelerate here um, with our own math department. Students can bring and use their laptops in classes, absolutely. Yeah, um, so the question is about taking, uh, well, the question was, can my student take ASL in the summer before high school? Um, and we get this question a lot about, you know, signing uh, forms for your student to take classes over the summer. Um, technically, they are not our students yet, um, and so no, we we do not sign off on classes for over the summer. And partly that is partly due because we, you know, as counselors, we don't know your students yet. Um, we don't know their goals. We don't know how they perform as a student, um, and so um, it makes us a little uncomfortable to be recommending your student to take classes when we haven't met them yet. See school buses. That's a great question. Miss Ellen's Martin is actually answering that, and we'll post that live. Not too sure how the buses system works. Thank you, families. These are some really great questions, and Miss uh, Sanguinetti, great job on answering them on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't typing earlier. I felt like if I touched anything, I would ruin the presentation. <laughs> well, we have. We have no more open questions in the Q and A. Um, we really, really appreciate you coming tonight. Um, you know, I think at one point we had over 200 uh, participants, so that just shows how invested you are for your students, um, and you know, wanting to get them started with high school as as smoothly as possible. Um, we will be here throughout the semester to help you on this journey. Um, be patient with us too. Um, but we will get all of your questions answered. We'll make sure that your students are registered for the classes that they want. And um, we know that they're eager to start high school and with being out um, with distance learning this year, um, I'm sure that they have a, a wealth of emotions uh, trans transitioning into high school. So we will try to make this as smooth um, as the transition as possible. Okay, but we hope that their rest of their school year goes great. Um, and we're looking forward to working with you next year. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. A great evening.